Mark's gospel is a really busy one where Jesus is full of activity, healing people left, right and centre, forgiving and you know, getting the paralysed man up and hanging out with sinners and tax collectors. And in the midst of all this activity, there's one verse which I think really speaks to us. And it's verse 35 of chapter 1 where it says that Jesus very early in the morning, while it's still dark, gets up and goes to a solitary place where he prays. And in that, I think we see something of the powerhouse behind all this activity that Jesus gave himself to. If we miss the fact that there's prayer undergirding it, we totally miss a key part of how, how we live powerful and effective lives as Christians. And prayer is something that we kind of all maybe know we should do, but we find it a little bit hard and it feels like you're talking to the wall or the ceiling or, you know, God's in Australia when we're praying. And he's not listening. He's not answering. How can we do it in a way that's effective? Mother Teresa says the best way to learn how to pray is simply to pray. In other words, what she's saying is start with just doing it. Start by trying. We sometimes make it more complicated than it is. More often than not, it's, it's a conversation. Someone else described prayer as a dialogue between two people who love one another. It's starting to chat to him. Lord, this is frustrating me. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? You know how when you have friends, uh, you kind of have different levels of friends, don't you? So you have some friends you just talk about not very much with, kind of just really surface level stuff. Some friends you might talk about something that's a bit, maybe a bit deeper. Uh, how you feeling about your kind of project at school or your project at work or whatever. And then you have just a few friends who you can share on one hand. You know, you can count on one hand that them who you share everything with, you share your heart with. Conversation with God happens on all of those levels. So it can just be chatting to him about what's on TV or, or, or the weather. It can be talking to him about stuff that is bothering you from work or, or from school. And it can also be the really deep stuff about who am I and I, I don't feel like anyone really knows me or I feel lonely or I feel, I feel unloved. Do you really love me? It's sharing your heart on that level with him and having a conversation. And it's a bit different because it's not like you're chatting to him in Starbucks and he's there and you're there and you know he, he speaks back like I am speaking. But he still speaks. One of the main ways is through the Bible, that's why we're reading it, but also in the still small voice as we sit there and we listen, God begins to nudge us and the more that we do it and the more that we make space, the easier it becomes to recognise his still small voice. You don't have to get up early in the morning when it's still dark to pray, but to pray wherever we are and to make space in some way is essential if we want all the activity that we're doing the rest of the time to be in line with God's will and to be backed up by God's power.